In this video on implicit differentiation, I'm going to work through the exam style question you see here, which involves finding the derivative dy dx, as well as the equations of tangents to the curve at a given value of x. So let's get started. I'll just move this question to the side, like so. Now we're told to consider the curve described by x squared plus 3xy plus y squared equals to 11. And the first thing we're asked to do is find an expression for the derivative dy dx. So let's go ahead. I'll start by writing 1 here for question 1. And I'll copy the equation we're given at the top here. So that's x squared plus 3xy plus y squared equals to 11. To find the derivative dy dx, the first thing we have to do is differentiate all of this with respect to x. And remember, we're dealing with implicit differentiation, and we need to treat the y's that we see here as functions of x. And if it helps, don't hesitate to replace the y's that you see here by y of x. That being said, let's go ahead and differentiate this. And I'll just write differentiate with respect to x. Going from left to right, the derivative of x squared is 2x. No problem there. I then add to that the derivative of 3xy. And to differentiate 3xy, we need to use the product rule. Indeed, we can think of this as the function 3x, which is multiplying the function y of x. And so using the product rule, we'll have the derivative of 3x times y. And since the derivative of 3x is 3, that turns into 3y, plus 3x times the derivative of y. And since the derivative of y is dy dx, that becomes 3x dy dx. I then add to that the derivative of y squared. And since y is a function of x, we need to treat y squared as a composite function. And so when we differentiate this, we use the chain rule, which leads us to 2y dy dx. And that's equal to the derivative of the right-hand side, which is just zero. Okay, now at this stage, we've differentiated everything with respect to x. But remember, we need to find an expression for dy dx. And looking at what we have here, we quickly see there are two terms with a dy dx. Indeed, we have 3x dy dx and 2y dy dx. And so I'll leave these two terms on the left-hand side, but I'll get rid of this 2x plus 3y by subtracting all of this from both sides of this equation, which leads to 3x times dy dx plus 2y dy dx equals to negative 2x minus 3y. Now, the trick is to place dy dx as a factor on the left-hand side. In doing so, we obtain dy dx times, in parentheses, 3x plus 2y equals to negative 2x minus 3y. Finally, dividing both sides of this equation by 3x plus 2y, we obtain dy dx equals to negative 2x minus 3y, all of which is written over 3x plus 2y. And that's the answer. We've just found the derivative dy dx. So I move on to question two. In question two, we need to find the equations of the tangents to the curve when x equals to one in the form ax plus by equals to c, where a, b, and c are integers. Well, let's go ahead. I'll just write two here to specify that's the question I'm answering. To find the equations of the tangents, we're going to need to use the derivative we just found. Indeed, this expression will give us the tangent's gradient. But looking at what we've boxed here, we quickly realize that the expression for dy dx involves both x and y. And so what we could start by doing here is finding what y is equal to when x equals to 1. And for that, we fall back on the expression we were given in the question. In other words, we use x squared plus 3xy plus y squared equals to 11. Now when x equals to 1, that expression turns into 1 squared plus 3 times 1 times y plus y squared equals to 11. 
and this turns this entire expression into a quadratic for y. Indeed, we obtain 1 plus 3y plus y squared equals to 11. And subtracting 11 from both sides, this turns into negative 10 plus 3y plus y squared equals to 0. In other words, y squared plus 3y minus 10 equals 0. And the solutions to this quadratic equation are the y-coordinates of the points on this curve, whose x-coordinate is 1. And looking at this, we can solve this by factoring. Indeed, we quickly see that we can write this as y plus 5 times y minus 2. That's equal to 0. And now that we've written this in factored form, we quickly see that either y equals to negative 5 or y equals to 2. In other words, there are two points on this curve with an x-coordinate equal to 1. Those points are 1, negative 5, and 1, 2. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box those two points. There we go. Okay, now that we know the x and y coordinates of each of these two points, we can use dy dx to find the tangent's gradient. And then we'll be able to find the tangent's equations. So let's go ahead. I'll start with the point whose coordinates are 1, negative 5. And I'll write that at the top here. I'm looking at the point with coordinates 1, negative 5. Well, when x equals to 1 and y equals to negative 5, dy dx, and I'll just write that, dy dx, will equal to negative 2 times 1 minus 3 times negative 5. And all of that's written over 3 times 1 plus 2 times negative 5. Now, on the numerator, this becomes negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, minus 3 times negative 5, so that's minus negative 15, which quickly becomes negative 2 plus 15. On the denominator, on the other hand, we have 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. In other words, we have 3 minus 10. And now carrying on towards the right here to save space, we have negative 2 plus 15, which is 13, over 3 minus 10, which is negative 7. Finally, I write the derivative at this point as dy dx equals to negative 13 over 7. And that's the tangent's gradient at the point with coordinates 1, negative 5. And now to find the equation of the tangent at this point, I'll use the point-slope formula for the line equation, which I'll remind us of at the top of the page here. That is y minus y1 equals to m times, in parentheses, x minus x1, where the point with coordinates x1, y1 is the point we know the line passes through, so that's 1, negative 5 here, and m is the gradient of the line, so that would be negative 13 over 7. And so that becomes y minus negative 5, equals to negative 13 over 7 times x minus 1. That becomes y plus 5 equals to negative 13 over 7 times x minus 1. And remember, we were asked to find this line's equation in standard form, written here. And so at this stage, it's best to multiply throughout by the 7 that we have on the denominator here. In doing so, this line equation becomes 7y plus 7 times 5, which is 35, which equals to negative 13 times x minus 1. And now distributing this negative 13 across this pair of parentheses leads us to 7y plus 35 equals to negative 13x plus 13. Finally, adding 13x to both sides of this equation, as well as subtracting 35 from both sides, leads us to this tangent's equation, which is 13x plus 7y equals to negative 22. And we're done. We have this tangent's equation written in standard form. Okay, to finish we do the same thing, but at the second point, 1, 2. And so I'll write that here at the point 1, 2. The derivative dy dx will be equal to negative 2 times 1 minus 3 times 2 over 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2. And that's equal to negative 2 minus 6 over 
3 plus 4, which equals to negative 8 over 7. And in fact, I'll box that result, dy dx equals to negative 8 over 7. There we go. Now that we know this derivative and therefore the tangent's gradient at this point, I use the same formula as I did a minute ago to find the tangent's equation. And this time it will lead to y minus 2 equals to negative 8 over 7 times x minus 1. I now multiply both sides of this equation by 7, which leads to 7y minus 14 equals to negative 8 times x minus 1. I distribute this negative 8 across the parentheses, which leads to 7y minus 14 equals to negative 8x plus 8. And finally, I add 8x to both sides of this equation, and I also add 14 to both sides, which leads to the final answer, 8x plus 7y equals to 22. And that's the final answer. We now have the tangent's equation at the point 1, 2. And if ever you're wondering what these two tangents and this curve would look like all together, you can see I've made a sketch of what all of this would look like. And that's just for you to get an idea of what we've actually found here. And there we go. That's it for this video on implicit differentiation and on finding equations of tangents.